What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com. In this video, you're going to get a snippet from one of my favorite interviews from our previous virtual summit, which you can access for free by going to AppMasters.com slash summit. You'll get all the interviews instantly. So go sign up there, AppMasters.com slash summit. But in this video, we talk to Javier Barnes and we talk all about the success of Among Us and Fall Guys and how that relates to the success of Fortnite. I think it's great insight into the mobile gaming space and how timing plays a big part. Along with some of the features that you have within your apps, the timing plays a big part in the success of your mobile game. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to growing your app downloads and your revenues. And welcome to the App Manor Masters Virtual Summit, our sixth one. And I want to say six because we've been doing it before this whole shutdown, before it became really cool for everybody else to do it. And today we're going to talk all about how do you really launch an early prototype? What do you measure? How do you get that engagement early on so that it becomes that you can build a game that becomes successful? later on. And today I've got a phenomenal guest. He is a game designer with over 10 years of experience in top grossing mobile games. He was a lead designer at Monster Legends. Javier, I used to love that game. And I'll tell you why we stopped playing it. Systems designer at Despicable Me, Minion Rush, and Asphalt 8. And he's now got some indie games that he developed as well. What do you feel about this whole Among Us craze? Any thoughts on that? I think... Um... It's the same spot of the market that four guys had. Um, in my opinion, uh, the case of four guys and Among Us is similar to Fortnite and um, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Um, I think that both four guys and Among Us came at the moment of the market just after the lockdown. And during the lo during the lockdown the entire gaming gaming sphere was extremely involved into the very hardcore games. Um, I monitor a lot of uh, Reddit groups and so on with gamers. And during the lockdown, they were playing Valorant, they were playing Hearthstone, they were playing more than ever games that are pretty hardcore and pretty demanding. Mm. I think what happened was that after a few months of being in the hardcore or the hardcore stuff, they needed, they, needed a, they needed a rest. And they needed something that would allow them to rest in a way that they could interact with other people. Um, and I think that both Fall Guys and, and Among Us were super, super good at bringing something that does not, does not need you, you don't need to be good at it to get fun and to perform even. Uh, it, they are very plug and play games. Uh, so you don't have to practice for a thousand hours. They are not stressful. And at the same time, they both incorporate a strong, really, really strong social component, which uh, makes you, especially among us, makes you interact with the people that you know, but that you don't, cannot meet in person anymore. Uh, so I think it, they hit the market at a very, very good moment. Now, the difference is a difference in price and distribution. Uh, Among Us is free on mobile and it's super cheap. I think it's below five bucks in Steam, while um, Four Guys is more of a premium experience. It got a huge distribution on the, on the uh, Play Store, uh, but, but in the end, it's a premium game. And I think overall, uh, I mean, eventually this, this will make Among Us be more distributed and have more potential to become the Fortnite of that specific genre yeah. of kind of, uh, you know, light-headed um, social game. I love doing this. I mean, you nailed it on the head because I didn't even match Fall Guys with Among Us. I have never played Fall Guys, but I know my son plays it and he, you know, he's the one talked about Among Us. But what was crazy about Among Us as, as looking through back on the launch date, like they've been around for a couple of years, right? And it was just during 2020 that it just went zoom. And you can look at the, the, the daily charts. It was somewhere around August of 2020 that it just whoosh, just like spiked up and you hit, I think you nailed it on the head. I mean, it's partly because people wanted that social element. Yeah. I, I heard that 
people on Twitch and YouTube, the streaming platforms really brought it to life. And it just, you know, it's, yeah. it's crazy. You know, like, this is two years. Th this is something that actually is similar to Fortnite because Fortnite was running for quite a while before it actually made it big. Interesting. Um, so I think, I mean, Fortnite, as far as I know, I've, I just follow it at the, a little bit at the beginning and then when it, when it became massive, but at, back at the beginning it was, it was unimpressive when it comes to the, when it came to the performance in the market and so on. And it wasn't until they kind of wrote the, the they became um, a battle royale and they kind of surfed on the, on the wave of battle royale that they, they made it big. Uh, so yeah, bo both things are very interesting in my opinion. Uh, sometimes some some companies kill games too early uh, because a lot of games have the ability to pivot into into something that is different and kind of find their market later on um, and sometimes whenever I'm looking at the history of some companies I see games that I think hey this game if it was released just today it could work so yeah Companies out there, if you have games that you think could be awesome and you canceled for whatever reason, try relaunching them just, just to see what happens. Uh, you never know. Well, I mean, I guess what's the takeaway, Javier? You have so much experience, so much knowledge in this. Like sometimes as developers, you know, a lot of the themes that we we're talking about is launch early, prototype early. And then we have these stories of Fortnite Among Us that have launched for a couple of years and took them two long years, which is ages in the mobile space to finally hit it big. Like what's the, what's the theme or what's the, what's the key takeaway here? Do we kill a game? What do we do here? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it. of course, what you don't want to do is kind of invest for a thousand years money in the game over and over, like just throw money into the game until mm -hmm. it makes it. Uh, and what is particularly interesting in both these two cases is the fact that none of them were linear increments. They were not growing little by little and then they made it. Um, it was some sort of overnight. Yeah. And in the case of Fortnite, it was kind of, they, they switched something, they bit, did like a massive change within the game and that snapped. Um, so what I would advise companies is, before you kill games, try to do like, radical changes in your games and build games in a way that you can pivot them a lot. Um, that's why I say that if you kill one project, probably the next project you start should be kind of, it has to be kind of related to the stuff you previously killed. Because at that point, after canceling one project, you're better sweeter than ever to succeed at the next attempt at that genre or add that audience. Um, what I've seen is that a lot of companies, when they fail at something, they get demotivated and they go for something completely different. And that's why I mentioned these cases where companies would release a, an open world and then they would rather later on release a car racing game and then a match three and so on. Because every time they fail, they get demotivated. They think, oh, I'm not gonna make it. And, and they go for another plan to get rich fast. And, Sometimes it's about, okay, you fail at doing a match three, try to make a, ma a different match three. Then if you fail, try to make a different thing that can reuse the learnings that you have extracted right. uh, on top of the technology and, and assets and everything. Um, it can reuse the learnings that you have extracted from your previous experience. Um, that would be my, my advice. Um, there's also one thing that I've never tried it, but I think it could work. Uh, which is, if you're about to cancel one game and the team, a lot of companies do this thing right now, like kind of uh, trying to emulate Supercell, where it's the team that decides uh, when it's the right time to cancel a prototype, which is great. It gives a lot of ownership. But here's my take. If the team decides that it's the time to kill the game, try to ask two other teams in your company if they think that the game should be canceled. And if any of the teams that are out there in the company doesn't want to cancel the team of, of the game of another, gave, gave them the, the game. Because I've, you know, in business, um, there's this thing where we say that the team that 
makes you star, uh, start to climb the mountain is not necessarily the team that is going to bring you to the top. I've never seen that do, I've never seen apply that learning or that, that concept to gaming. Usually yeah. when, when the team uh, says the game is over, the game is over. And I think a lot of, com uh, a, a lot of companies could have a second chance if they found uh, another team within their company that could, that would be interested in saving that game and maybe apply ideas, radical ideas that may not necessarily be visible at that point by the team that, that is currently running the game. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed just that little preview of the interview. Now, if you want the full interview, which I highly recommend you check out, along with some of the experts in the mobile gaming space, we have five videos in total. We decided to do five instead of our usual 10. We've got five in total, great guests, where we talk about indie success stories with Ryan McLeod. We've got how do you really scale your game? So much great content, retention, monetization, growth, the pillars of a successful app business. All that is in the App Masters Virtual Summit, our latest one that you can access for free. And it's gonna be free until we decide to do our next one. So frankly, it'll be free for a long time. Appmasters.com slash summit to get your free access to our latest one that happened in November 2020. Once again, appmasters.com slash summit. All right, guys, till next time, I'll see you on the next video.